Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's lecture on Chapter 6, Colorism and Skin Color Stratification. Learning goals for this chapter are as follows. When and how did colorism and skin color stratification originate? How does colorism differ across societies? And how does skin color relate to gender and beauty? The concepts from this chapter that it talked about were the following. Colorism, which refers to the idea that within races, lighter is better. Skin color stratification, which uh, refers to resources like income and status are distributed unequally according to skin color. And pigmentocracy, a society in which Black, Asian, and Latino people have different social statuses according to their skin color. And here you have an example of <clears throat> what is used um, and what's an, a, uh, an effect of skin color um, stratification and colorism, which is the many different types of skin lightening creams that um, are sold and are available throughout the world. So the reading talks about the history of colorism in the US, but also throughout um, the, the world. Um, in the US, colorism can be traced back to slavery. During slavery, white slave owners raped enslaved Africans and their offspring were lighter skinned. In some cases, these offspring would be given slightly better positions as enslaved people. Lighter skinned slaves were also more likely to be freed. Over time, lighter skinned African Americans formed the core of the black elite. In Latin America, a skin color hierarchy has existed for centuries. During the period that Latin American countries were Spanish colonies, the Spaniards developed an elaborate system of castas based on ancestry that determined one's social and legal ranking in society. There were over 100 official racial categories in Latin America, and some castas had more legal rights than others. Colorism has a long history in Asia. Colorism has been found in ancient texts, in Indonesia, this preference for light skin was reinforced during the Dutch colonial period in the 19th century. When the Japanese became the colonial power in Indonesia in 1942, they also brought their preference for lightness with them. US popular culture has also influenced Indonesia through advertising, and not just in Indonesia, but throughout the world wherever uh, American culture, films, advertising, and so on appears, it sort of promotes right this idea of whiteness as beautiful and a preference for lighter skin. Whether or not the preference for light skin predates colonialism in Africa is an unresolved question. It is clear that the obsession with light skin increased with colonization and the presence of large numbers of Europeans in Africa. In South Africa, skin lighteners have been available since the 1930s. And here we need to remind ourselves that different countries in Africa have been <clears throat> colonized by different European powers throughout history. And so when those moments have happened historically, it has influenced this um, idea of light skin being better. And this is what is referred to as a global color hierarchy, a worldwide system in which white or light skin is privileged and people, especially women, strive to become lighter. And you can see this with the prevalence of skin lightening cream that you find throughout the world. Here's one example. Across Asia, there are historical and present day advantages associated with white skin, especially for women. Research by Rondi and Spickard find, finds that uh, the preference for light skin is omnipresent, yet Asian Americans do not want to be too white. And you see this in some of the um, studies around different populations of color in the United States, where there is a preference for lighter skin, but not so, mu so much so that they want to necessarily be white American. So there still is a desire to hold on to your identities as people of color. But when it comes to thinking about beauty standards, especially when it comes to women of these different populations, there is sort of this preference for lighter skin. Thank <laughs> you. 
Latin American countries are, my, are also marked by a skin color hierarchy in which lighter skinned people possess a disproportionate share of the resources. There's also this concept of mejorando la raza or improving the race that is always um, uh, talked about and commented on where there's always sort of this pressure for um, people to choose partners that are lighter skin than they are themselves. Um, and that this is a way to improve the race because the assumption is that the children of that marriage will be um, uh, inherit the lighter skin, lighter uh, eye color and so on. Skin bleaching has become common throughout Africa, America, uh, throughout Africa. Studies have revealed that as many as 25% of women in Mali, 30% of women in Tanzania, 52% of women in Dakar, uh, Senegal, 66% of people in uh, Brazzaville, Congo, 75% of people in Lagos, Nigeria, and 60% of women in, in Zambia use skin bleaching products. So the, you can see that global white supremacy influences African countries. Um, again, there's a wide variety of labels for different skin tones among African Americans and lighter skin African Americans have better access to resources. And, and by resources here, we mean better pay, better jobs, and so on. In the United States, light skin, long hair, light eyes, and straight noses are all associated with beauty and with whiteness. When a woman is called fair, this label refers both to light skin and to physical attractiveness. Thus, African-American women with long straight hair and light skin are often perceived to be more attractive than their darker skinned counterparts. Of course, there is per, uh, individual preference and variation, yet studies have consistently shown that dark-skinned women are devalued both by their co-ethnics and by whites. Research of 149 African-American women living in the US and 168 Indian women living in India found that the extent to which women of color in these two places seek to lighten their skin or straighten their hair is shaped by the degree to which they have internalized why beauty standards. And the reading talked about these two particular concepts um, that capture some of these issues. The beauty cue, which refers to how sexism and racism interact to create a cue of women from the lightest to the darkest. An erotic capital, a concept linking the attractiveness and sensuality of a woman to her skin color. Now, what are some ways in which people resist colorism? And this is just one example that we saw discussed in the reading, the hashtag not fair and lovely. <clears throat> Namira Islam, executive director of the Muslim Anti-Racism Collaborative, argues that by modifying our use of language, we can reshape our thinking on skin color and beauty. Uh, the hashtag not fair and lovely uh, re referencing the popular skin lightening cream fair and lovely in order to analyze and discuss colorism within non-white communities um, was used and popularized by um, Namira Islam. The cream sold globally and marketed by an Indian parent company is infamous for its commercials featuring a darker skinned protagonist changing his or her, but usually her life for the better by making her skin tone significantly lighter. And here's a quote um, from um, Namir Islam and that, that points to sort of what her point was in popularizing this hashtag. I ask that we begin untraining ourselves from using the word fair to mean light. No skin tone should ever be considered unfair nor should we settle for a world in which possession of a certain skin tone brings with it an assessment of strength of character. A fair world is a just world. So in conclusion, colorism refers to the idea that within races, lighter is better. Colorism can be found in nations all over the world and has a long complex history. But activists have started to and continue to work to resist colorism by educating ourselves and thinking critically when we think about things like um, light skin and using terms like fair to talk about skin color. So this ends our lecture for this week. I'll see you guys in the discussion post.